today we are having last Wednesday service of the year and um, the year has gone by really fast and but this year has been great for hungry generation for good news church it has been full of um, exciting things we had a lot of great memories this year we've seen a lot of people people's lives being changed and and many of you are here that you came this year and God touched you and today you are living witness and testimony of the things uh, what God has done this year in your life this year we've seen how we grew in attendance where before we had as many uh, people in attendance as my, as many leaders that you've seen on our board there you know God has really done great things in our church this year he's done a lot of um, we've seen a lot of healings that took place through our prayer lines in our home groups uh, it, it, every time we, we went out and ministered to like Pastor Rod shared this uh, uh, right after worship and so God has done a lot of a lot of great things he's done a lot of awesome things in our life we've seen people this year people that receive healing from incurable diseases people that receive freedom from all kinds of demonic oppressions nightmares of hearing voices and things of that sort we have much to celebrate for this year for what God has done do you agree at church come on and um, you know we started we we released our album church album uh, worship album come on put your hands together for Jesus this has been this has been a long dream of of ours to do that and we were finally able to do it and not only we just record we recorded one and it's available on iTunes and, and Google Play and we also have physical uh, copies where you can purchase after the service but uh, we are already in in process of, of writing and, and getting ready for recording of the second album and uh, we just came back with our worship team uh, from a retreat where we had a little writing session and just a little getaway uh, spiritual retreat and we got some awesome awesome things where we were very excited to share with you so God has been good to us this year if you agree shout amen, amen. and so um, but I want to tell you that the reason why we uh, we can celebrate and remember these great things the reason why we can see so many new faces this uh, this evening sitting uh, and uh, and your life has been changed God has healed you God has delivered you God has set you free God has given you a second chance in life some some of you are here where you overdosed many times and you should have died and God rescued you the reason why we can do that this evening is because vision because of the vision because the focus wasn't broken because uh, our pastor he had a vision to see people saved in tri-cities from all kinds of ethnicities and all kinds of backgrounds uh, people from all kinds of problems where people would be set uh, saved people would be healed people delivered and for many years he kept that vision he kept that vision life he instilled that vision into us and today we're running with it and today we are byproduct of this vision and so um if there would be no vision if we wouldn't have this goal if we wouldn't have this vision if we wouldn't have this uh this focus that uh, that, that that we have if we would have not held on to it for years year over year even those years we didn't, we, when we only talked about the things that we we experienced this year but we haven't but we've never really seen it because it was the vision wasn't broken because we hold on held on to it today we're enjoying the things that we see today and it's very important in our lives to have a vision it's very important for you and I to have a vision for our, for, for our personal life because vision and dreams according to Dr. Yun Gucho he says the vision and dreams are the language of the Holy Spirit vision and dreams are the language of faith and if we want to be a man and women of faith, if we want to learn how to walk by faith, if we want to learn how to please God, if we want to see things accomplished in our life, if we want to see the hand of God, the miracles, if we want to see how, uh, how God will help us to achieve the, the dreams that He put on our hearts, we have to learn how to speak His language. We have to learn how to walk in visions and dreams. You know, as a responsible person, uh, you... Uh, as a responsible person you take time at the end of let's say at the end of the month uh, you look over your budget you see how much you spent what you spent on money where things you can improve where, you know where you can be tighter where things maybe you can spend on and then you make a plan for the next month right 
and uh, as a as a people as a responsible people we have to evaluate ourselves this this evening and we have to check ourselves uh, check the year of 2015 and begin to prepare and begin to set a vision for the year of 2016 and I'm not talking about a just some list of goals or new year's resolution because many times those we end up failing those things statistics says one third of people they quit their new year's resolutions or goals by january and uh, 77 percent never see them accomplished to the end maybe they get it to a certain point but but they don't see those goals and 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 um and new new year's resolutions come to an end what i'm talking about and not just a new year's resolution or a goal i'm talking about receiving a vision from god for your life where you want to be in 2016 and um, you have to have a vision of where you want to be in life especially now this year is coming to an end to an end as we reevaluate our year we reevaluate how much we've grown as a person and character how much we've grown spiritually how much we've grown um, in relationships how much our home groups have grown how much how many people we brought to, to Jesus this year how many people we helped to disciple this year as we evaluate our finances we um, we need to cast a vision and we need to prepare ourselves for 2016 because I know many of us here in this place just like me I look back in 2015 and I see that there are certain things that I should have accomplished there are certain things I should have done better there are certain things that I could have done better certain things I should have believed for and I would have seen them achieved but I look back and I see because I had in certain areas I had I didn't have a vision I didn't have um, a, a direction I did not achieve or didn't get as far as I wanted to be so as I was meditating uh, for myself and and, um, and kind of thinking over this year and thinking of 2016 I don't want to make the same mistakes I've made in 2015 I want to be a person that will improve and go further in 2016 how many of you guys agree on that I don't want to be a person that walks around the mountain in in 2000 and uh, in, in 2016 I want to go towards my promised land I don't want to be a person that's spinning the wheels or a person that's that's running a treadmill you know you, there's a lot of movement there's a lot of busyness there's sweat you know there's a lot of effort but yet you're still in the same place you're stuck in the same place and so today I want to talk a little bit a, a little bit about uh the importance of the vision and why we need vision you have to have vision for every area of, our li of your life the the place where the the areas of your life where you will not have vision is the place that will remain stagnant it is a place where is the place that will um, go around the mountain is the place that will stay on the same place so number one thing that you have to have uh, you begin to plan and vision and have a vi vision and have a vision for for your life is a spiritual growth you have to this year upcoming you have to learn you have to grow uh, more with God you have to grow more in your prayer you have to grow more in your reading uh, reading of the Bible reading of the spiritual material listening to things you have to grow your inner man this is the biggest goal the biggest vision that you can set for yourself as as a child of God as a Christian so that your spiritual life does not stagnate so that you grow continuously to grow in this because if you don't purposely in if you don't purposely um, begin to go towards the direction if you don't purposely begin to live towards that vision you will remain the same in your life you need to know where you're going in your finances maybe it's getting out of debt maybe it's beginning to give more and be specific when you say you want to give more when uh, in 2000 and 
14, the end of 2014 going 2015 when me and my wife we looked over the thing that we looked over our finances we looked over how much we gave and we decided that this this 2000 year of 2015 we want to give the double of what we we gave in 2014 and when I looked over when I looked over our finances this year when I look at the amount of, of the things that we gave and we even exceeded the double amount that we decided to give but if we in 2014 didn't sit down together looked over and we did, it did not decided that we we wanted to grow in our finances we didn't want to go further we didn't want to uh, we want to learn how to trust God more we would have not been in a place where we're at now every if you want to let me give you this example if you if you want to get to Seattle if you want to drive to Seattle or any other destination you don't just sit in the car and drive aimlessly hoping you will end up in Seattle that's not the way it works you get a vision that you need to be in Seattle and that vision gives you a direction. The, the vision sets you up to go to, towards your destiny, towards what you need to achieve. But if you don't have a vision first, then you will not have a concrete direction. The scripture that I want, I want to read today comes from, uh, from Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18. New King James Version says this that without vision people perish. In another translation it says when there is no vision people are set loose. Uh, and, uh, they're, they're set loose. They, they don't have guidance. They don't have vision. They don't have a direction. They're running aimlessly all around. And so in order for you to achieve the things that God has for you, you have to get vision. You have to see yourself doing better than you're doing now. For example if you're struggling in your finances you have to set a vision to be out of debt to make to make more money and set a set a goal for yourself to to get out to get out this 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 cycle in your life of limitation and when you get vision God will empower you to reach that goal God works through faith but it's impossible to have a faith without a vision because if you if you don't have a vision you have nothing to believe in you have nothing to hope for you have nothing to aim therefore you don't have faith and if you don't have faith God can't work with you and with God we always quote these things that with God all things are possible but it is impossible to work with God without faith faith unties God's hands to begin to help us to achieve the vision that we set forth for ourselves but if we don't have a vision in our spiritual growth in our personal growth if we don't have a vision in our family maybe you have a family member that's not saved if you don't envision them saved if you don't if you don't set the vision to to see them saved and begin to pray for them and begin to believe for it then they will not get saved today there's many people in this place that 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 got saved this year and they're direct by product of somebody's faith they're direct by product of somebody's prayer of somebody's vision and they they came to this place and they received salvation because their mom was praying for them because their dad was praying for them because their family was, member was praying for for them because somebody had a vision to see them saved and they they had faith and they worked with God to see that accomplished amen God is only moved by faith so if you want him to move in your life you have to unleash your faith through visions in dreams but the way as I've, as I've already mentioned is that the the language of the Holy Spirit the language of faith is visions and dreams so that means you have to learn how to speak that language I remember when first time uh, when not first time when we were coming to United States from from Ukraine as immigrants to United States and so I didn't know much English we knew hi buying coca-cola and uh, that was that was that's about all that uh, three words that we knew and so I remember this uh, very clearly um, I was about what 13 years old at that time we're on the plane everybody's sleeping and you know they come in with the cart and 
passing out uh, food. And so, um, and you know how in the plane they always wait till everybody falls asleep before they start passing out the food. And so this lady comes to me and she says, you know, she starts explaining everything they have. Of course, I don't know anything. So I just say Coca-Cola and they gave me a bottle of Coca-Cola, even though I was hungry. Okay, so because of my language limitation, because of my language barrier, I was only, only able to have what I was able to ask. And so... You know, I have a uh, little uh, little baby girl, she's 11 months and she's beginning to learn things. She's beginning to learn to say certain words and beginning to learn how to ask for certain things. But because she knows little of our language, my language, she has limitation of what she could ask she might want to she might want many things she she could probably ask for for many things but because she's not able to express through English language or, or Russian Ukrainian language uh, she is not able to have the things maybe that she wants and sometimes she'll be walking around and just crying and uh, and and whining and whining you kind of give her this and she doesn't want to give her this she doesn't want to give the other thing finally until you find what she really wants and then she stops whining but because of the uh, because of the bar limitation the barrier in language she's not able to have everything that she wants so she can have and this same thing works in our relationship with God there's many things that we might desire there's many things that we might wish for but it only remains an idea or our wishful thinking until we learn how to speak the language of God which is the language of faith and begin to request according to according to how God wants to be according to his language according to how God wants to be addressed because you have to understand that God works through principles and he said his principles how he works how he answers prayer and unless we learn that language unless we learn language of faith then we will not be able to receive all the things that we desire and we will not be able to accomplish everything that God has promised to us and so the ABCs of language of faith is the word of God and so that's why we have to every single every single day we have to go into the word of God we have to learn the language of God we have to learn what how God speaks we have to learn that God doesn't speak a language of defeat that God doesn't speak a language of negativity that God that God doesn't speak of a uh, language of oh I'll never amount to anything I'm not good enough we have to learn the language that God speaks so that we can have what God has promised for us to have. His language is a victory. His, his language is I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. That God can fulfill the desires of my heart when I abide in Him. And so we have to learn the language of God so we can communicate with Him so that we can achieve the full potential that God has called us to achieve. And so that 2016 will be a year of greater miracles of greater things that 2016 will be a best year so far of your life no one falls to the top people fall down and so if you want to reach the top if you want to reach everything that God has for you in 2016 if you want to reach everything that God has for you in your life you have to cast a vision you have to set a vision what you want God to do so that then God can make that happen in your life so that you can learn how to work with God and can bring that to pass and work with him in Jesus mighty name amen Moses he was a great man of vision and Moses comes to people of Israel and he received a vision from God of setting, of setting uh, Israelites free bringing them to the land of milk and honey bringing them to the promised land and he comes to he comes to Israel and he shares this vision says God sent me to set you free and take you out of the Egypt and 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 uh, deliver you from the slavery and bring you into the land of milk and honey bring you to the promised land everybody gets excited everybody likes that idea because who likes slavery who likes being in bondage who likes being told what to do every day of your life who likes to not have their own will and so Israelites they get excited they're like yes you know we want to get out and 
and Moses goes and talks to Pharaoh he performs the ten plagues he 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 performs God's miracles uh, he, he takes them out of the land of Egypt now they're finally free Pharaoh continues to chase them God splits the Red Sea they just walk right in the middle of the Red Sea God then drowns the Pharaoh finished closes the chapter finally they're set free everybody's rejoicing everybody's having fun everybody's having a good time and everybody likes that idea of of uh, of a promised land but the moment the hard times came the moment they ran out of water the moment they ran out of food they begin to complain and murmur and they say we want to go back to Egypt this shows me that they never got the vision of the promised land in the first place they got excited by the idea of being free they got excited by the idea of not being slaves anymore they got excited of idea that they will have houses that didn't build and vineyards that didn't plant but they did not let the vision have them and at the moment at the hardest moment of their life, uh, the, at the hard moment in the desert, the first trial, first temptation, first hardship, they begin to ask to go back to Israel, uh, to, to Egypt. They begin to say, we would, it would have been better for us if we stayed in, uh, in, in Egypt. It would have been better. We want that onion. We want that bread. We want, instead of keeping the vision alive, they begin to complain and murmur instead of keeping a vision of a promised land alive they wanted to return to Egypt and this shows to me that they never took hold of the vision they really never really made a part the the vision of a promised land a part of them and that's why they all died in the wilderness and they never possessed the promised land see lack of vision blames God and others for their problems blames God and, and, and other people for their unfortunate situation, blames God and other problems for their hardship but people of vision they continue to trust God and and trust his process and follow his process. What if Israelites when they ran out of water and they were thirsty instead of coming to Moses and saying you're blaming Moses and blaming God why did you take us out of Egypt you brought us here to kill us what if instead they came to Moses and said Moses you know God performed great miracles he delivered us God split the Red Sea and he drowned our enemy and we're free forever if God can do that why don't you pray to God that God will give us water in the desert. We believe that God will can give us water. Since God brought us out of Egypt, He didn't bring us to die here. He surely will bring us into the promised land. So He has a provision for this problem. Let's pray and let's ask God that He will provide water for us. Or same thing with when they didn't have bread or they didn't have meat. If they would only approached it, if there would have been people of vision, they would have approached it instead of blaming Moses and trying to kill him every time and blaming God they would approach it from a different way and they would partner up with Moses to believe that God has a provision because God gave a promised land as a vision for them to reach lack of vision will eventually take you around the mountain but having a vision clear-cut will take you to your promised land when you live a life whatever area it is in your life maybe it's in the area of your uh, health maybe you're you you experience sickness or some kind of chronic disease or or you're facing some some troubles in your health and and instead of blaming God instead of blaming other people or instead of blaming the world if you get a vision for your for your health if you get a vision of the cross that in his stripes you are healed then God you can begin to work with God that God can bring a healing into your body and you can be healed instead of and you can reach your promised land instead of walking around the mountain struggling with that sickness and eventually dying in that sickness whatever area in your life it might be whatever area in your life you're struggling in whatever area in your life you want to advance further maybe you you grew up in a in constant lack in constant shortage 
just poverty from generation to generation never enough or barely enough just to pay bills and hand to mouth and 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 you today you're listening to this message and you uh, you're getting inspired you want to get a vision for your life where you live a life where there's more than enough and you not only you're going to have more than enough for yourself to get the things that you need and have the things that you want but be a person that will be giving giving money giving cars giving blessing other people with it but it first starts with the vision it first starts is that I want to improve I want to go from this place to the next place and you have to have the next place the next step marked clear cut you have to have a vision that's clear cut so that God can use that vision to produce faith within you and work with your faith to achieve the desired goal that you set in your heart amen without vision the danger of not having a vision is that you will walk around the mountain <clears throat> you'll be stuck in one place you'll be busy working hard striving to achieve it spinning on wheels but still on the same place when you get a vision you're able to move forward and move into the direction of a promised land amen <clears throat> Um, and I'm just going to share three three things of how to get a vision and how to achieve the promise the land that God has for you the promised land can be different for every person <clears throat> for some per so for some people the promised land could be having their health restored <coughs> for some person the, their promised land could be seeing their family restored seeing their kids come to Jesus seeing their maybe maybe family uh, their family completely restored the relationship marriage restored the promise then can be for each person the promise then is different but God can help you achieve the things that you desire and help you to get into the promise then in Jesus name so first thing is vision comes from God Moses goes to the mount he wanders around the mountain and he sees the burning bush and he goes up and up the mountain and he comes to the burning bush and he has a conversation with God and God instills a vision in his heart which is to save and rescue Israelites and bring them into the promised land. Moses struggled with that vision. He he didn't see it possible. He didn't see it how in the world one man can go against an entire empire, the strongest empire of that day without an army, without a sword, without a shield without an army and bring out three some three uh, more than three million people out of the Egypt he said God it's impossible I'm just a single man I can't do it but when you receive the vision from God regardless of how big that vision is if you can accept it if you can embrace it God will be able to come make it come to pass maybe in your situation you know the things that you 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 want to see come to pass maybe your family come to know Jesus maybe uh, your marriage restored or maybe getting out of that financial trouble that you're in or maybe getting uh, healing in your body and it seems like it's impossible because you already prayed before maybe you know you went to the doctors and doctors said this is what you're gonna have to live with whatever the situation is it might seem impossible but if that vision is from God and you embrace it you make it your own God will make that vision come to pass so number one is vision comes from God if you want to receive a vision in certain area from God you have to go spend time with him you have to pray and ask God that will God will give you that vision because when God gives you the vision you embrace it there is nothing that's impossible to you amen the vision has to be clear-cut it can be so general that you can't point the finger at it it has to be uh it has to be clear and cut it has to be exactly what you, what you uh exactly what you want to achieve in life the story of dr yungi chong a lot of you guys know is that when he began to pray and he been asking god um to uh give him uh a bike a chair and uh a desk and he continued to pray and pray and pray about it and he got disappointed Be and so he said God I mean I've been praying for like six months why is I still don't have a bike chair and a, and a desk and and uh, he was really angry with God really and upset with God and God said well 
I want you didn't you never told me what kind of bike you want what kind of chair you want and what kind of table you want so there's many different kinds of bikes there's many different and shapes and, and types of kind of desks and chairs and so through that through that experience God taught him how to have a clear-cut vision so he asked God for a specific kind of bike specific desk and specific chair and two or three months later he received exactly what he was praying for so our vision when we receive vision when we get vision when we set our vision the vision has to be clear cut it has to be exactly what you want to see so that when God answers it you know that it's from God in your vision start from small things you know um if you want to if you uh, if you don't have a car and you your your goal and vision is to get a car for example don't shoot for a Lamborghini or Mercedes S6 you know S550 you know this great you might get there one day but if you've never gotten a Geo or Civic uh, maybe you want to start with that okay make the goals that make those goals learn learn to work with God learn to see his faithfulness in your life so that your faith can grow eventually for a Mercedes a Lamborghini or whatever else you want maybe a jet who knows uh, but set the attainable goals that you can reach with God the the, the problem why the, the the problem why so many people get discouraged in in their, in their vision is they set those huge goals they they never um, they never achieved small things with God they never built that history with God they never built the ark of faith and then they get disappointed when they don't receive uh, the bigger things the story of David comes to my mind is that before David tackled Goliath he tackled a bear he tackled a lion he tackled those things that came at him in the desert maybe a wolf and then when he was saw God's faithfulness in those small things then he had then he saw uh, clear-cut a vision of how he's going to defeat the Goliath he came to Goliath without any shame without um, any reservation he said that I'm going to cut your head off and I'm going to feed your body to the birds and that's that's the, he said uh, clear-cut and that's exactly what happened and God helped him to achieve the dream because he already knew how to work with God he had an experience with God so when you set your vision start with small things learn to receive answers from God with small things and then move on to bigger things and number three start now don't put it off till tomorrow don't put it off till you're more holier or till you feel like you deserve it more don't wait till um you you pray certain I'm going to be consistent in my prayer then I'm going to set the vision and I'm going to pray for these things start today start working with God faith pleases God not your works not your deeds righteousness comes from Jesus and based on those things you have to work uh, with God and receive your promised land number two is don't let go of a vision when it gets hard don't let go of your vision when it gets hard vision is really tested in the hard moments in hard times we see that uh, Joshua and Caleb while they were a part of the same crowd that left Egypt but they allowed the vision to come into their heart they embraced the vision and every time they faced a challenge they declared that they can overcome the challenge with God they saw the vision clear-cut they, 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 they knew where they were going and what they want to achieve. They saw the promised land which was flowing with, 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 with milk and honey. The houses they didn't build, the vineyards they didn't plant, the wells they didn't dig. They saw it clear and they were holding on to that. And even the hard times, they kept on their faith and kept their vision. They went through the same thing that everybody else went. They were hungry. They were thirsty. They faced the snakes that everybody else faced in the desert. But yet throughout all these years, they did not let go of the vision. And they went and conquered and received the promise of God that they had. And number three is confess positive outcome. You can have a vision and you can pray for the things that you want to see but if you don't begin to speak positive things speak promises of God if you can if you will not begin to confess positive outcome of your situation you will make your 40 days this is how long the Israelites were supposed to it was supposed to take them 40 days to get to a promised land 
but because they murmured because they complained because they always doubted God because they always spoke negatively because they thought negatively they turned at 40 days into 40 years and eventually even died in the desert confess positive outcome in your situation see God's solution in your situation see God's hand providing in your situation and begin to confess with your mouth what you want to see Bible says there's a power of life and death in our mouth Jesus said if you tell this mountain to be moved and cast into the sea it will happen with just small faith but it requires speaking Jesus also said if you when he spoke and cursed the tree Jesus said if you if you have small faith you'll be able to do the same thing when you speak in Joshua Moses commanded he said let this book of law not depart your mouth what he meant by it so let this book of law let these promises let this vision let it not depart your mouth continue to speak those words continue to declare God's promises continue to declare positive outcome he says and he said Moses uh, Moses said to Joshua that you will be prosperous in all of your ways all of your ways will be blessed anytime we face hardship anytime we come short in our finances anytime we feel the pain in our body we should not confess what we feel at the moment we should not confess how we're feeling we should confess the promise of God we should confess the positive outcome because God is on your side and he can he can make a way where there is no way he can even bring a dead body to life he can restore every situation there is no circumstances that you're facing there is no hole that you find yourself in that Jesus can pull you out but he requires you he requires your vision he requires your faith he is willing he is able and he is waiting to partner up with you to take you in 2016 and accomplish great things in your life but he requires you today and requires your faith requires your vision give God give the Holy Spirit material to work with give him your visions give him your dreams give him your positive confession give him your steadfast faith unmovable unshakable that trust God that trust God despite of what you're going through this trust God despite of your limitation your lack trust that trust God despite of your pain in your body trust God despite of maybe things are not going well in your family give God something to work with in 2016 so that you can look at the end of 2016 and see God's miracles see God's hand see God move and see what God has done for your life God created his world by speaking into it today God gave you authority and power to create your world by speaking into your world begin to speak positive things begin to think positive things begin to declare that everything will be okay that this situation that you find yourself in will get resolved that that court case you're facing will get resolved in your favor that poverty that you lived in for so long and limitation and and that that will be put to end and you're stepping into a new year new era new level with God where there's more than enough give Holy Spirit material to work with which is your visions and your dreams and your positive confession there was this man named by uh, famous preacher Kenneth Hagin and he was a Christian he was a Christian man young man and he had he he had deformed heart and blood disease deadly blood disease and he was paralyzed from his head down and he was laying in bed and there was no hope for him and he was pretty much suffocating and dying and there's nothing doctors could do for him and so he asked his mom to open a bible to mark chapter 11 verse 24 which says whatsoever you desire and in, in prayer believe that you receive it and you will have it and he continued to recite it he continued to read it and read it he was so sick to the point that his mom would have to come and put up his bible when it would fall because he couldn't even use his hands to lift up the bible to to to, to lift up and hold the bible 
and he said one night he knew this was his last night he was dying he said I felt like I was dying and he's like barely through this dim eyes blurry vision I was continue to read continue continue to read the scripture and continue to declare that whatever you ask in prayer if you believe it you have it and he declared it and confessed it and declared it and confessed it as he was dying that night and when God came and visited him that night as he continued to declare and hold fast to the vision of him being healed seeing himself healed and continue to declare that he's healed right at that moment God healed him immediately he had he had he he, he uh, was healed of deformed heart so his heart was completely normal had a regular beat everything was fine he was healed of a de deadly blood disease and he walked out of his bed and started walking and and started uh, became a preacher and started preaching the gospel and today he is known as a as a preacher of faith and preacher of positive confession declaring God's word and so and he, as he learned this principle he began to apply the principle into every area of, of his life in the area of finances in the area of marriage in the area of family and he applied the same principle that whatever if you can believe it and whatever you ask you will have it and he continued to confess God's word in his life and he received what he, he he always received what he confessed so today as we're gonna hear in a minute we're gonna go into prayer ask God what's the vision he has for you regarding your family regarding your marriage ask God what's the vision that he has for you regarding your finances what's the vision that he has for you regarding your career your business where does he want to take you next year it might be scary it might be big get ready for that because God always thinks big embrace it hold on to it. don't let it go doesn't matter how ridiculous it looks don't give up when you hit hard times and continue to speak God's Word continue to speak God's Word continue to confess positive outcome continue to confess God's faithfulness continue to confess like John Hagee continue to confess despite of how you feel and how things look around you and I promise you one thing God will always remain faithful God will always come through to those who walk in faith in Jesus mighty name did you receive anything